Hey folks, welcome to this guide devoted to kind of explaining the basics of Kusarigama. I don't know why I say kind of, because it's not kind of, I'm just going to teach you a lot of things pertaining to Kusarigama. In any case, rambling aside, what is the core identity, or rather, how do you approach playing the Kusarigama? So let's take a look at some of the moves that are associated with the weapon. Kusari Gama, truth be told, is a very technically heavy weapon. Uh, there is a lot to think about when you play it, but it is arguably one of the most flexible weapons that you can use in the game because it sports some of the most key damage possible, with especially key, uh, key damage per second, with abilities such as Reaper, particularly if you have the Mystic Art associated with the Sickle, which is Waxing Crescent. There's also Shooting Star. Now the difference between these two Mystic Arts is not the it's, it's not that hard to figure out wax and crescent boosts the sickle the attack damage and key damage and shooting star does the same and if, one thing i forgot to mention but it's stated afterwards it reduces the amount of key you used so whichever one you specialize in gets a whole host of bonuses but if you happen to get things like mystic dyad which i actually do have on this specific kusari gamma you get to have both benefits so it's just a raw upgrade for the entire weapon do more damage do more key damage use less key really awesome one of the few mystic dyads that i recommend you get and for those of you who are new to the game mystic diet is unfortunately not something you can get until you gain plus three otherwise known as dream of the wise so once you start unlocking ethereals which are the highest rarity then you can get access to this but it's really good but up until then you don't have access to that so it will eventually Depend, uh, depending on your playstyle, you may want to pick one or the other, but in all honesty, either one's good. But you have power plays such as Reaper, and if you specialize in the Sickle, you can totally murder an enemy. So you'll see many enemies, sorry, many players just go up to enemies and just spam Reaper, which works, and it's really effective. But all the other skills are a lot harder to work with. So these pull techniques, you have this pull technique, Serpent Strike, which throws the Sickle at a target and pulls them to you or if they can't be moved which is basically most yokai then you get pulled to them but then you have abilities such as black vines which use the metal weight and does the same thing and so it may be like well i guess one's better than the other why why not and it can be unclear and then most recently they added deadly mark which is totally different you use the weight to basically propel yourself and it looks super super cool right and so right away you have three different dis ways to pull yourself towards a target or pull a target towards you or just some sort of pull mechanic to work with and so you're controlling an opponent in three different ways so it can be tricky but then on top of that you have moves against that work really well against humans such as foot sweep which just knocks them right down so like okay that's interesting but then on top of that you have really long animation abilities which look beautiful such as renegade dragon but you may be worried about the animation time that it has and then to make things even more complicated you've got a like a repost of sorts bird of prey which does work against basically any attack but can be tricky to work with and then you've got abilities that literally allow you to jump leaping strike and, and so you can see that there is quite a lot of decision making involved when you're using this it's not just hey i'm gonna do my damage unless you're trying to just use reaper but there's many many different ways you can approach an enemy and kasari gama has a bunch of tools even though you may think that you just don't have that many skill customizations which is true but this weapon is quite diverse and then on top of that you have sheath abilities which i don't use that can again alter how you play a bit. Increase the amount of damage you do, but the amount of key damage you take. Decrease the amount of key you use when you dodge, but lower defense. And then do more key damage, but use more key when attacking. So maybe if you pair this with say Reaper, you could really do a lot of key damage that way. Or if you just wanna do a ton of crap damage, you can do the same thing. I mean, it's really just kind of up to you. So there's a lot of customization that is possible with this weapon. And then on top of like the different motions, the long animations, I mean, you've got long animations like this, Whirlwind, which will take quite a while. Uh, and then you've got things like, hey, you can retreat. And so it's just really unclear how to work with this. 
But the one core thing I, I would like to illustrate with you is that this weapon is really good at controlling your positioning and controlling various opponents. And that is something that is not to be underestimated with. It's not as straightforward as, say, the weapons like the axe, which it's like, hey, I'm just going to smash something. I just need to go for the risk and I get a huge reward. This is quite different. So when you play the Kusari Gama, think about controlling the position of your target very carefully and doing a whole and, and just being very stylish about it. So to further illustrate this point, let's talk first about the pull abilities and the differences between them. So there's Serpent Strike, which uses your sickle. There is Black Vines. And then there is also the new and the glorious Deadly Mark, which is a lot of fun. So these three abilities work very differently against humans versus the yokai. In general, against humans, they just pull the target towards you with the exclusion of Deadly Mark, which works uh, interchanged. It, it's, Deadly Mark is the only, I guess, pull technique, so to speak, that works the same. But Serpent Strike, uh, Black Vines function very differently against humans and yokai. So let's demonstrate how they work. So naturally, these are fairly long animations and you don't want to whiff them. Yeah, that kind of hurts, right? Now let's talk, let's let's talk shop and I already talked shop. So let's just show you Serpent Strike. Serpent Strike pulls the target. Quite a late key pulse. All right, that's a pretty late key pulse. But, and then there's Black Vines. Very, look at that, I could keep pulse very early. And Black Vines is generally faster. Deadly Mark, pretty straightforward, a big damage play to boost yourself in. But here's one thing that you may not be aware of when it comes to any of these pull techniques. So all three of the pull techniques actually truncate some animation time from the next skill or next attack, whatever you decide to do. So a great combo that you should probably, you might see many players do, is the following. So I'm going to guaranteed trip this target without having to be at high risk. So let's pull him. There. Foot sweep. Knocked him down. Perfectly in range. That's pretty cool, right? Um, unfortunately with foot sweep there's usually a bit of a cooldown in terms of how rapidly you can use foot sweep on a target to knock him down, particularly for human bosses. Now let's demonstrate this with black vines. Oh, I missed. Oh, god dang it. Game didn't register it. Come on. Try it. Oh, he dodged it. Didn't hit me there. Ooh, not that much range, huh? Will that work? There's another difference. So there you go. Another appreciable difference between Black Vines and Serpent Strike. Serpent Strike generally seems to have more range. Black Vines might be faster. Now what about Deadly Mark? Does this work for Deadly Mark? Oh, you bet it does. Pretty cool. Deadly Mark has like a remarkably fast key pulse window. But you can basically queue up another animation right away. So I'll have to demonstrate this more against the Yokai. But that's just like an example of something that you can do with these pull techniques. Now let me demonstrate them against Yokai. I'm gonna take off foot sweep because it doesn't really work against Yokai. But with each of the three pull techniques, aside from the fact that they have differences in terms of the range that they work, um, the speed at which they work, their key pulse windows, or whether they have one at all, which I'll first show against Yokai, each of them can basically make the next follow-up attack that you do faster, or seem faster remove some of the startup frames. So let's first just demonstrate the differences between each of the three pull techniques just on a yokai. So I'll start with Serpent Strike. Serpent Strike will pull you towards a target. Reasonably fast key pulse window. Which is good. What about Black Vines? Black Vines has no key pulse window, but you can actually just dodge right out of it. Look how fast I could dodge. So if you just want quick speed to get in, you can do that. Pretty neat, huh? Now what about Deadly Mark? Well, Deadly Mark's gonna work the same as it did against a human. 
Um, you may have noticed I actually got a little fortunate and was able to avoid the kick from his left side. But yeah, that's because you move kind of in a clockwise fashion. So you can almost use it as a quasi-evasive ability that helps you engage a target. The key pulse window for Deadly Mark is remarkably fast, but as with the other pull techniques, you can sequence an ability right after it without having to key pulse. All right, so let me demonstrate this, and I want you to compare the differences between normal blade spin and a blade spin after any of those three pull techniques, all right? Blade spin is still pretty fast, but let's demonstrate it after a Serpent Strike. It just kind of felt like it fluidly, it, it just flowed between one ability to the next without virtually any downtime. This will consume an appreciable amount of key, but if you got the key to spare, it's pretty awesome. It was demonstrated with Deadly Mark, which makes it seem so darn fast because you just have like almost no startup. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. Let's show it again with Deadly Mark. Ridiculous. So that's some stuff you probably didn't know about the three pull techniques. So definitely a lot of thought to put into that. One of the more common things I've seen used with Deadly Mark from players such as White Goat is for him to use Deadly Mark and then go right into a kick. Pretty cool, huh? Uh, the reason for that is because the Whirlwind Kick typically does not have the best tracking. But Deadly Mark will orient you towards your target. Ow. Generally does a good job of orienting you towards your target and kind of improves some of the tracking. Kind of. Not as much as you might think, but it seems to help. So let me kind of just, since I just talked about it, I might as well show you how Whirlwind Kick can sometimes totally whiff and it feels really bad. So there's kind of like a motion ascribed to it. And so if you're at a decent range from your target, it's pretty good. But if you're up close, you can kind of see that sometimes I will whiff it. So if I'm up close, dead center, no problem. But you're not always going to be dead center. If I'm to the side, yeah, that wasn't too bad. If I'm circling my target and I'm not right there, I whiffed it. God dang it, this is a lot harder to showcase than I realized. Okay. Dude! What? Okay, whiff. Right there. It kind of has like a weird path, and sometimes you will just kind of whiff it, which can be very frustrating. Like there, if you're not perfectly facing your target, you basically can whiff it. Finally, I showed what I wanted to. But yeah, whirlwind kick. If you're either, so the tracking can be a little weird. But if you're just a little bit away from your target, it's not too bad. But more often than not, you basically want to be looking pretty much at the center of your target. You don't want to be oriented to the side, otherwise you'll whiff it like I did. All right. Definite whiff there. But all right. Um, in case I hadn't mentioned it, roll one kick is just mostly for either a quick hit stun or for doing key damage. Okay, but let's so let's talk about other things that usually will fly under the radar. So I have discussed now utilities of these three different pull techniques. They're all really useful and can be very situational. Naturally, Deadly Mark is arguably the flashiest and the coolest, but you can never pull a target towards you so that you could do things such as Serpent Strike to pull a target towards you into, say, doing a foot sweep to guaranteed knock down a target, which is really, really good. All right, so that's the one thing Deadly Mark can't do. Which is important, because get, being able to go for a final blow on many human opponents, especially when they have the curse on, is super awesome. But okay. One thing that gets overlooked when it comes to the Kusarigama are both the running and the dodge attacks. Uh, running, uh, the game, I, running, dashing, treat them interchangeably with sprinting. When I mean running, I mean like you're sprinting. Um, I just say running because I think it's a bit uh, easier for speaking players to understand 
but the running and dodge attacks for the Kusari Gama most oftentimes get neglected. Most of the time I see players just use a lot of high stance quicks because they do not get deflected. Um, I will seldom see low stance stuff, but the risk of having your attacks bounce usually deters people from that. And so they'll stick to high stance uh, most of the time. So one tool that you can use that can not necessarily deal with per se the blocks but just give you more options in terms of approaching your opponents beyond just high stance quick spam are your running and dodge attacks so i want you to pay attention to how fast the mid stance running attack is going to be all right in fact that was pretty fast wasn't it saw that key pulse window so brief That's pretty fast, isn't it? And I could input buffer a little bit if I did it right. In fact, it's so fast, you can actually cancel the attack altogether. Don't believe me? All right, so mid stance running attack. Okay, 437 damage. Keep pulsed it, I just keep pulsed it. So yeah, that's really fast for an attack. Now, of course, not dealing damage isn't necessarily the most useful, but you could do things such as virtually a near instant flash attack, if that's your thing. So yeah, just food for thought. Ow. Yeah, pretty neat, huh? Something you may not have thought of. High stance running attack, while the animation isn't the most unique, as you saw, is pretty reasonable for horn breaks, too. And has an appreciable amount of range. The dodge attacks aren't necessarily the most unique, but they're handy. Now, speaking of dodge attacks, I find that the mid or low stance ones are remarkably valuable. You saw how quickly I could, could buffer, um, it's, it's a teaser for a future lesson, a lesson, but you saw how quickly I could buffer the mid stance running attacks, right? The dodge attacks are pretty fast as well, so the animation for those is basically the same as the mid stance running attack, but check how fast I can work with them. Be reasonably fast, huh? The one one difficulty that I'm sure you'll have is trying to figure out how to nail this ability when you say you're dodging to the side. Be like, it's great when you're facing your target, but there's many moments where you're gonna find yourself not facing a target. So generally what I like to do with with how the ability works is as opposed to going clockwise to attack as you can see I can still kind of whiff it I generally go counterclockwise and it works more often than not simply because the whole animation is like me lunging a bit towards I want to say the northwestern sort of general direction so up left uh, like 9 10 o'clock but yeah, really handy. And kind of the same with the running attack as well. I generally like to run in a northeasterly fashion, so like my 1 or 2 o'clock if I'm doing it. Um, unless I'm comfortable going for like a straight up, straight up centered attack or the enemy's hitbox. The enemy's body is big enough. But yeah, pretty cool. And it's pretty fast. But yeah, pretty cool, huh? Let's just add in what I've shown you so far. Boom, and that feels so much faster than you may have thought. Which is awesome. Now, one other attack that I most often see greatly neglected is this attack. The high stance strong. This is an attack that has a remarkable amount of range and a remarkable amount of damage despite the long recovery frames. And remember, if you don't like the recovery frames of whatever you're doing, just use a yokai ability. 
Alright, let me demonstrate how effective this can be against humans at long range. And I'll show you one other cool thing with it. First, I'm going to deplete his key. Yeah, 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 get out. Okay. Three large range, and now here's what I wanted to show you. It's targets on the ground. That's kind of a big deal. Oh, he didn't even hit me. And then, of course, you don't like the animation? Cancel it. Oh, I didn't hit him from here. Oh, no. That's still remarkably far. And that's what I like to do. It feels so cheap. So, yeah. Definitely use that high stance strong, even with the high recovery frames. And remember, whatever recovery frames you don't like, just cancel it with a yokai ability. The key pulse window is admittedly pretty long, but it's still a really underappreciated ability. But don't ever underestimate the moments in which you have a great deal of range. And that's a great example of it. But of course, you've got quite a lot of things you can work with in terms of utility with the crazy fast running attacks, which you can outright cancel <laughs> just all together. And you have some flexibility when it comes to the dodge attacks as well. But again, that will require some practice. One thing I do want to mention when it comes to the dodge attack for high stance is that uh, for whatever reason, you can't necessarily... Um, all right, so what's weird is that if I do a second attack right after it you know how okay so you know how i've talked about you do a dodge attack all right let's just show it with mid stance you do a dodge attack and then you do a quick attack and then you can do a strong ender come on am i being slow i'm being slow so kind of like that right just one two three right high stance is a little weird so when i try to do it he just stands there like a complete idiot. So you actually have to do, I believe, two quick attacks. The so one, two, and then you can go for it. It's weird. I don't know why this is the case, but I figured you should know in case you're worried something's going on. So yeah, not one attack, but you gotta do one, two. Oh my god. Okay. There we go. Oh, but I ran out of key. Go figure. And do it again, and then go again. So it's dodge attack, two quick attacks, and then you can do the strong ender. Weird. I don't know why this is the case. It just is. All right. So let's just have a quick little recap. There's a lot of information I know I've covered here. I haven't touched on the parries. I haven't touched on the utility of all so many abilities, but I think this will be an appreciable amount to work with. So let's start kind of in reverse order. Don't underestimate the speed of these running attacks and these dodge attacks. Pretty cool, huh? Also remember that in general, because of the nature of the dodge attacks and running attacks, you either want to be perfectly centered on your target and facing them, or you want to generally do it in a clockwise way to, or sorry, an anti-clockwise way to compensate. All right, it's still fast. And then you can sequence stuff normally as you'd like. When it comes to combo enders after that, the exception being the high stance, you gotta do two quick attacks. And then we've got old techniques. Different ones, which work differently. And then all of them basically can truncate. They all of them can truncate animation time for your next action, all right? And that's pretty rad. It is at the expense of key, but it is super great. And then, of course, I've shown you some stuff involving control when it was coming to the human with foot sweep and utilizing a pull ability to do so. Oh, don't whiff them. Whiffing sucks. It really sucks. But yeah, that's a lot to chew on for now. Next time, I know I'll have to cover things like the parries, I know for sure there's like so much to deal with. Uh, aside from Reaper, Reaper is pretty obvious. Reapers just hold it down, do a bunch of damage. 
but yeah there's a lot to cover and i will begin to continue i will continue showing you stuff in a follow-up guide to the kasari gama but chew on that for now and yeah thank you guys for watching hope this was helpful and i will see you guys in the next video